here and we start Allah hadith number 27 and that is about uh, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and having presence of heart we have very beautiful hadith uh, from Al-Kafi the late Shaykh Kulaini through a chain of uh, narration quotes Imam Sadiq alayhi salam and Abi Abdullah alayhi salam قال في التوراة مكتوب This is something which was written in Torah it's written in the Torah يبن آدم O son of Adam تفرغ لعبادتي Try to free yourself for my ibadah. Free yourself. Faragh means to be free, to not to do anything. Tafarragh uh, li'ibadati amla qalbaka ghinan. If you free yourself for my ibadah, I feel your heart with rich. وَلَا أَكِلُكَ إِلَىٰ طَلَبِكَ And I am not going to leave you and your request. Means leave you alone to deal with your request. You know we say لَا تَكِلْنَا إِلَىٰ أَنفُسِنَا Means don't leave us to ourselves. Don't let us be alone. Is it the same, uh, you know, family of words? لَا أَكِلُكَ إِلَىٰ طَلَبِكَ Inshallah, I come back and uh, explain more. وَعَلَيَّ أَنْ أَسُدَّ فَاقَتَكَ And it is upon me to feel your need. It means to meet your need, to feel the gap that you have. Give you what you want. وَأَمْلَأْ غَلْبَكَ خَوْفًا مِنِّي And feel your heart with fear from me. But if you don't free yourself for my ibadah, then I will make your heart filled with concern for dunya. It's not that you will be free. No. You will be busy and concerned and stressful, but for worldly reasons. So mala and then I'm not going to feel your poverty. It means to overcome your poverty. And I would leave you alone with your request and your haja. So this hadith, which is very famous hadith, is talking about the necessity of not just doing ibadah rather to free yourself for ibadah free your time and free your heart and mind for ibadah uh, especially in the time of hajj you know, sometimes maybe for example uh, people uh, if they have nothing to do nothing to worry they do ibadah properly some people never do it properly but some people they're okay but if there is something that worries them, if they have some concern, if they have some work in some office, for example, if they have some problem with business, some problem with family, some Ill illness issue, then either they delay their ibadah, for example, they don't they say salat on time, or their mind is very busy and they want to quickly finish and go and fix the problem. They think, the problem can be solved outside Salat and without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but out of respect for Salat they do their Salat quickly you know like for example I meet someone on the street and I am busy I have some urgent appointment but also this is my friend I have to greet him but I want to quickly finish this and go and do my job it seems that we think, unfortunately, many times that Salat and talking to Allah is like this. 
something that we have to quickly finish it and go and fix our problem. Even when we are in the middle of Salat, still we are thinking about that problem and to save, in order to save time from now, <laughs> we plan in Salat what we want to do. This is a very, unfortunately, uh, common problem. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, your main opportunity for fixing your problem is just actually now. It's the time of ibadah and you are being permitted, given chance to talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the Lord of this world. If in an office you have problem and there is a kind of employee, an officer in that office that can solve your problem, okay? So you leave your home, you go there, you try to make appointment to see that officer and solve your problem. Now, if by chance you see the head of that office and he's happy to listen to you what do you do you don't quickly finish this to go to and speak to that you know officer you try to use this opportunity to talk to someone who has full control and authority and now imagine if the head of office has invited you and said I am at this time available and invite you to come and talk to me if any problem you have. He is inviting you. So it would be very unwise if we don't lose this, use this opportunity or we just go and quickly finish and then try to go and beg that person to give us appointment to solve our problem. Maybe he doesn't listen, maybe he doesn't pay attention. So. This is something that we should keep reminding ourselves. This is not something that we don't know. You know that he has all the solutions. He has the keys for all the locked doors. You know that. But unfortunately, we tend to forget. And we are happy to go and meet everyone and ask them for help. Sometimes you know, even we beg them for help. But when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we unfortunately don't appreciate. So, in this hadith, uh, which is actually explaining what was revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Prophet Musa alayhi salam, Allah says, you should free yourself for my ibadah. Free your time, but also free your heart, your mind for ibadah. Of course, maybe even when you want to free yourself, something comes to your mind. That's possible. But as much as you can, plan things in the way that when the time of Salat comes, you don't rush and you don't uh, feel too much uh, stress and pressure. Relax. Sit a little bit, prepare your mind, and then start Salat. And know that this is the best opportunity that you have for meeting your needs and having your heart out. And especially, inshallah, we'll talk about it. If you make this a habit, you know, if, for example, suppose Salat is at 12 o'clock, midday is 12 o'clock. If weeks, months, years pass and I am always at 12 o'clock say my Salat automatically even before 12 o'clock my mind is getting ready for Salat and when I am saying Salat my mind doesn't go anywhere else so to make a good habit is very important and it helps a lot. Also to be in a place which is prepared for Salat, a quiet place, a peaceful place, a place which is prepared for Salat, Masjid, Salat, Jama'ah, or even at home if you're not in Masjid, able to go to Masjid, at home have a place prepared for Salat. This help or help a lot. So we go again to the Hadith. 
O son of Adam, means all mankind. Tafarrag li'ibadati. Free yourself from my worship. Amla qalbaka ghinan. If you do so, then I will fill your heart with rich. It means you don't feel poor, you don't feel needy anymore. And I'm not going to leave you to your haja. I'm not going to uh, deny you my help and assistance. And it is upon me to fill your gap, to fill your poverty, it means to give you what you want. And also to fill your heart with my fear. You become more and more uh, conscious of my presence in Salat. But if you don't free yourself for my ibadah, I will feel, which means this is the natural, you know, many times you have to understand that it's not that it's something that Allah wants to create problem for me. It means this is the result of that, because to'i the af'ali means this is the outcome of your own action, that I will fill your heart with concern and engagement with dunya, and your poverty will remain, and I will leave you to your haja. Okay, you didn't want me to help you. Okay, go and fix your problem. So, the first chapter here is about this concept of faragha for ibadah, or farag for ibadah. In Farsi, you say faragat. And this is very important. So, it's not just physics of ibadah. You say, okay, I, I prayed, I did recitation, ruku, sujood, everything I did. If you look at my body, you see I am praying. Say, no, sorry, this is not enough. This is only the surface, this is only the cast. This is qalib, this is the cast. What is inside this cast? What is the spirit? inside this body of Salat. That is something that needs presence of heart. As much as you have presence of heart, your Salat has life. Sometimes I, uh, you know, think it this way, that imagine if you are creating some birds but these birds are not able to fly they look like bird but they have problems with flying because you didn't give them proper health and life like you know Isa salam was blowing into the bird and becoming a real bird. Imagine you have also such a power, but as much as you f blow into the bird, they have life. If you blow not fully, they will have no life or they would be ill. So it means that you have many of these <laughs> birds around <laughs> that they are not able to fly. And some of them are dead actually. Our Salat is like this. On the Day of Judgment, you would see your Salats and you would see if any of them has been able to ascend, how many of them, if they have ascended, how much they have ascended. Salat has this potential that if your heart is present, you don't need to do uh, wonders, you don't need to do miracles. Salat by itself has this ability. Salat is Mi'raj for a moment, is a ladder, is a bird. Just, you have to have presence of heart so that your Salat gets life and energy to depart. So, Imam Khomeini says, in order to have presence of heart, you need to have free time and freedom of heart and also you need to make yourself understand the significance of ibadah because freeing time is easier but freeing heart is not that easy 
So you need to understand the significance of ibadah and keep reminding yourself of the significance of this moment that you are present before Allah SWT. If we want to really understand the significance of Salat, because you know, I know many of us, you know, think that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, you know, at this time, you know, you say your prayer. He is not there, you know, more than outside that time. He's, uh, for him, all the times are the same. All the places are the same. And also, it's not that he is more present there or he's more attentive there. You know, many times this comes to our mind. But this is not correct. This is not the case. Yes, he is present everywhere. But he is more present when your time of Salat has arrived. He is more attentive to you. Not in the sense that he is changing. No, it's because of your situation. You are put in, like when you are in a holy place. Why when you are in a holy place, the chance of your Salat being accepted is more. Your Dua would be accepted more likely. Because being in that place puts you in a better position, in a better uh, encounter with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The same is with time. Time of Salat, for example, between Fajr and sunrise, this is the time that Allah has made it available for you to have a better chance of talking to him, especially Salat al-Wajib. It's very important. Nafila is also very important, but after you bring Salat al-Wajib. If you don't bring Salat al-Wajib and do Nafila, no. Salat al-Wajib is very, very important. Between Fajr and sunrise, you have this opportunity to have a special welcome by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a special uh, reception, a special, you know, event. And on time, at the beginning, it's even better. That's the best chance that you have. So you should think that Allah is waiting for me at that time to meet me. Have this mentality, this prepare your mind that this is awalul waqt and Allah is available, has made himself available for me to talk to him. Not only he's going to listen to me, he's expecting me. He's, he's waiting for me. Don't miss this opportunity. If even one Salat is accepted, your whole life will change. Unfortunately, we ourselves delay the process. We think, no, it's impossible. I need, you know, many, many days and weeks to work on this hajjah to get it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <laughs> How can in one salat I get this hajjah? But believe me, Allah has no problem. He has no hesitation. It's just me and you. You know? If you go to someone who is very generous and say, you know, every day I come and take you one from you one pound, he says, okay. If you say, I need 100 pounds, I, uh, you know, take you just now. He would give you. So it's up to you. You take 100 pounds at the same time, or you say, you know, every day I, day I come and I take one pound. As you wish. <laughs> so, <laughs> so when you go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, every opportunity for dua or salat, appreciate and know that that can change your life. Completely can transform. Like, you know, you have one opportunity to talk to the king. That's enough to get what you want. Anything that the king can give. If you manage to please him, he will give you. You don't need to say to the king, you know, I come hundred times and take from you. Yes, if you are clever... Every time you get the maximum that you can take. So you go hundred times, but you get hundred things, not one thing you divided hundred pieces. Unfortunately, uh, we don't really appreciate Salat. I'm talking about myself. We don't really appreciate Salat because we have been saying Salat, you know, and we think it's something that 
is always possible, always, you know, happens. If, you know, someone says, I am every day available for you, you take it for granted. If someone, you know, you have to struggle for several years to meet, then you appreciate more. Allah is so kind and gracious that he makes himself, makes himself available for each of us five times a day. And now we are thinking, you know, sh should I go wholeheartedly or no? Uh, it's a very unfair, very unfair. So you need to free your time and heart. You need also to make your heart understand <coughs> the significance of ibadah. And if you understand the significance of ibadah, your salat would be for you the most important thing that you do every day. More important than your study if you are a student or a scholar, more important than your work, than your business, than anything is your salat. The most precious time of your day should be the times of your salat. And then he quotes this uh, uh, hadith from, again, Shaykh uh, Kulayni, from Imam Baqir, alayhi salam. And Imam Baqir told Zurara, لا تتهاون بالصلاتك. Don't underestimate your salat. Don't take your salat you know, easy and underestimate it. فَإِنَّ النَّبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَآلِهِ قَالَ إِنْدَ مَوْتِهِ Imam Baghdad says to Zurara, Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم at the time of his death said, Rasulullah said, لَيْسَ مِنِّي مَنْ اسْتَخَفَّ بِسَلَاتِهِ it's not from me, the one who underestimates his salat, takes his salat, you know, very uh, cheap and, you know, uh, light in the sense of not precious. Laysa minni man sharaba muskaran. Also the one who drinks khamr and anything that makes him drunk is not from me. لا يرد على الحوض لا والله such person would not enter uh, or come close to me near the fountain near the house by Allah so basically it shows that Salat is a condition for being part of the Ummah of Rasulullah, part of the people who benefit from him and his Shafa'ah on the Day of Judgment. But not just bringing the physics of Salat, a full-fledged Salat, and that is to appreciate Salat, to give significance to Salat. We have also another hadith that Abu Basir quotes Imam Khazim alayhi salam and Abi Basir qala qala Abu al-Hasan al-Awwal. Abu al-Hasan al-Thani is Imam Raza alayhi salam. Abu al-Hasan al-Awwal is Imam Khazim alayhi salam. Qala Abu al-Hasan al-Awwal alayhi salam lamma hadharat Abi al-Wafat. So in the same way that Rasulullah when he was dying emphasize on Salat, Imam Kazim says, when my father, Imam Sadiq, was dying, he said to me, قَالَ لِي يَا بُنَيَّ My dear son, لا ينال شفاعتنا من استخف بالصلاة Whoever underestimates Salat would not reach our intercession. And not benefit from our shafa. And you know how much we need shafa. So, benefiting from Rasulullah and his nubuwa, and benefiting from Imam and his wilaya and imama, depend on salat. Again, not just doing and bringing and saying salat. 
to consider salat as very valuable and precious thing. Not to do istighfaf. Istighfaf comes from khiffa. Khiffa means uh, not heavy, light. To take it light in the sense that you don't give value. You underestimate it. And there are many hadiths about this. And then he talks about uh, the significance of presence of heart more. But I think, inshallah, we can continue this discussion in the next session. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us with understanding better the significance of Salat, significance of this gift of Salat, and inshallah, feeling the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the time of Salat, and engaging with our mind and soul and not just body at the time of Salat, and understanding that pleasure, or at least part of that pleasure, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Imams had when they were saying their Salat. That was the most uh, pleasurable thing for them in their day. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad.